Well, greetings from beautiful Grand Rapids, Michigan and Baker Bookhouse. I'm Dr. Bart Denny. I'm joined here today by Dr. Jean Porter King. And we are so excited to have her today. Dr. Jean is an author, consultant, a facilitator, a trainer, mentor, minister, and author of this great book here that's uh, newly released called Leading Well. It's a black woman's guide to holistic barrier breaking leadership. And Dr. Jean, I can't say enough great things about this book, but I don't think I could say it as well as you. So if you wouldn't mind, can you tell us about what, what precipitated this book? What brought it about? What inspired you to write it and the things you hope to accomplish? Yes, thank you, first of all, Dr. Burt, for uh, having me on this interview with Baker Bookhouse Bookstore. And um, a shout out to all of your audience. This book came about in a time in which two of my very dearest and closest friends um, died a month apart of rare cancers, late stage cancers that were diagnosed um, very late. And it was a wake up call for me, I was devastated. And it was a wake up call and I started exploring and praying and I ended up for that following year, that program year at our church, developed a teaching series on um, living from the well. We called it the Well Woman Series because again, that there was a health component with my friend's death, but they were Christian women who led in the marketplace, in academia, and they left a marvelous legacy. So as we began to study how do we live from the well to be well, uh, I began to delve deeper into the woman at the well story and began to see a leadership component in it. I began to see a call story. I began to see this woman who evangelized. And then as I looked into church history and especially the Greek Orthodox tradition, I began to learn more about her in church history, at least in that branch of church history. And it was just a marvelous story that I wanted to share this leadership component. And at the same time, help more women leaders develop wellness practices into their leadership by leading from the well, which we know the well of the living water speaks of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's fantastic. And, and you know, throughout the, throughout the book, you really uh, skillfully weave that, that story uh, of the, the woman at the well here. And uh, I do love her story. Uh, I always think of her as the, the first evangelist really, but um, I, I often, you know, I, I don't know that necessarily comes to some of us to think of her in her own right as a leader. And, and uh, so it, it really, uh, that's really a, a great thread you weave throughout there. Can you talk more about that and the more how, uh, about how the woman at the well can be instruct, instructive to, to aspiring black women uh, leaders who, uh, um, who are trying to break barriers? Yes, definitely, because she did break some barriers. And um, I, I opted and was very prayerful about centering my story and other Black women's stories in this book um, because often we do feel like outsiders in the places in which we lead. We're often fewer in number and we can be the first to raise our hands to want to lead and prepare to lead, but the last to be asked. And that's just a lot of data that shows that, especially in the marketplace and in some churches. And so that outsider status, I also think uh, affects our, our well-being and our health. Lo and behold, I began to make the connection that, think about it, the woman of Samaria would have been an outsider to the Jesus' culture, or the culture of Jesus' day. But Jesus being the great culture breaker, the barrier breaker, defies those cultural biases and, and makes a point to go through Samaria. And I don't believe it was just a geographical lesson. I believe it was a theological and a missional lesson that he intended to include the Samaritans into his kingdom or gospel mission. And he started with this woman who ended up leading a revival of sorts. As you said, she goes out to evangelize and the masses come to Jesus to hear more about Jesus. There's more to the story, 
There's some other things I want your readers to um, discover as they read. But I saw her outsider status and that Jesus was intentional to sit at that well with her and ask her questions. He, she asked him questions. We actually see them as great dialogue partners. And I thought, wow, isn't this marvelous that the Lord is doing the same thing with women and men today, but I center the stories of Black women in my own story and history to show we, even if we do feel like, or even are positioned as outsiders in the dominant culture, in the mission of Jesus, we are included. And he is calling us to do great kingdom work and to follow that call, whether it's in the marketplace or in ministry, but we are included in the mission of Jesus. Well, that is so powerful and, and so encouraging. And, and uh, you know, you talk a little bit in the, the book about uh, leading for, uh, from your authentic self. And, and do you feel like, uh, um, well, first, how important is that? And second, do you, do you feel uh, that... Uh, Black women are discouraged from being their authentic selves in leadership? I think there's many times in which we have. I've been in leadership for a number of years, so I've got enough miles under my belt <laughs> that I, I have experienced that and others have also. There's been an expectation to assimilate, um, even in things that are as basic as hairstyles, for instance, that there's an expectation to kind of assimilate. And consequently, it sends a message that um, maybe our natural real self isn't good enough or it doesn't line up. And so I think when people can, number one, bring their authentic self to leadership, um, they're leading from the place in which God created them. Because I believe we lead from who we are. We lead from the inside out. We lead best from the inside out. We're tempted to lead from the outside in, from the messages from the outside world, the metrics, et cetera. So yeah, I think it's an important message that that holistic message, spirit, soul, and body, being authentic is helpful for our leadership. That's excellent. You know, and the, this, as you talk about leading from the inside out, this really uh, makes me think uh, from uh, about the matter of faith. And uh, I think we're encouraged in our society today to compartmentalize faith and the secular and uh, um I mean, what would you say to that, uh, aspiring leaders? I totally agree with you. I have been blessed to lead both in the marketplace and in ministry at the same time. And I go where the Holy Spirit leads me. But we do sometimes um, are encouraged to put that faith on the back burner. And I say in this age, that should be one of the diversity dimensions that we can um, tout and recognize that that is a part of the distinctive that we bring as believers to the marketplace. And so this notion of leading well, the wellness dimensions that I'd want your listeners to know about are ninefold. And when you typically look at wellness dimensions from the various wellness theories and models, they typically have six, nine, or 12 wellness dimensions and spirituality is one of the six, nine, or 12. For this book, I anchor our wellness dimensions in our faith, in our spirituality, that we lead from the spirit connected to the Holy Spirit. And from that well flows then the principles, the dynamic of wellness for our other mental wellness, um, mental well-being, emotional well-being, our physical well-being, our relational well-being, et cetera. So there's messages from her story really in all of those dimensional um, factors. But for me, it has to be centered in our faith, our spirituality, and our relationship to God through our Lord Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. And, you know, uh, I, I really got to thinking here uh, as, uh, as I read through the book, I, I, I read it and uh, have had a number of leadership positions myself over the years and really a student of leadership. I read your book and, and, and I said, this, this speaks to me, this speaks to me. And I, I over and over again, I, I, as I read through the book, uh, your points really spoke to me. And I said, well, I, I don't think I'm the target audience here, but uh, I, I, am I just strange or, or were you really shooting for, for more than just uh, aspiring black women who, who, who are emerging as leaders? 
the um the message of this book or the messages are relevant to all people who lead and especially those who lead from our faith perspective so it is a broad um application and i would invite other uh, men of all ethnicities and women uh, white women women of color to join me in this leading well journey you know the title is a black woman's guide to holistic um, barrier breaking leadership and i do center black women because i'm a black woman and i share so much of my story that is instructive for all leaders i've been a leadership development consultant for 30 years and, and in the last five or six, went and um, got my um, certificate. So I'm a board certified coach and I do leadership development. So I coach and train um, and have been blessed to actually run programs all over the world, literally in every continent except Antarctica. So my messages, my principles, my practices are relevant for all leaders. This particular one has us look at leadership through the lens of Black women and the woman of Samaria to show a distinctive perspective that is instructive for all, but honors the experiences that we have. And for those that consider themselves our allies can even do more to help reduce the barriers that many of us face so that we can lead well and create these um, um, opportunities for more people to lead well and to be effective in their leadership, as well as um, to lead from a place of wholeness. That, that's fantastic. And you, as you speak of, uh, uh, of allies and uh, people who wanna create opportunities, obviously we can never fully walk a mile in someone else's shoes. So uh, what would you want those of us who, who aren't black women to, to know we, we haven't walked in those shoes? We, we, perhaps want to create opportunity there's uh, but we don't know what we what we don't know uh, what would you want us to to keep in mind in, in our desire to to help someone along the way to help aspiring black women leaders awesome that's a great question i sense that the lord is calling us to another place in the church and ministry the kingdom and to do that, we need all people of faith, all called by Jesus to be on board. And there are uh, as inadvertent ways, sometimes conscious, sometimes unconscious, in which we are leaving a great number of vital perspectives and people from that ministry leadership. And um, I'm gonna help develop more leaders for the kingdom. And I want to be able to um, help all readers recognize that um, there's some things we all can do to advance the kingdom and we have to do it from this place of wellness. And so those that are in positions, decision-making positions of power, I want them to take a good look at how they lead. Are there places in which they lead from an unhealthy place and consequently, actually might erect some of the very barriers that we're talking about. That's number one. Number two, what are the ways in which they are excluded? And again, this book helps them deal with their own exclusion. So we start with looking at it through the lenses of both the woman at the well and Black women, but we will see that it is relevant and applicable to all who call themselves believers and lead from that place of faith. Well, Dr. Jean, thank you so much. This, I think this is a, a, a powerful and, and important work that you've done here. Uh, and uh, I know that you've got a busy schedule coming up and, and that's going to be, a, as a, if I'm correct, that's available on your website. Uh, um, or, uh, yes, and um, I often will share it also on Instagram. I'd ask your uh, listeners um, to follow me on Instagram that I let people know where I am um, through social media, even more so than the website, but they're more than welcome to check out my website also where I have coaching tools and other resources that can help us that go along with the book. And that uh, website is drjeanporterking.com? drjeanporterking.com and Instagram, drjeanporterking.com, all the socials, including LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Fantastic. And folks, you can get a copy of Leading Well, 
uh, at the best price I think you'll find online at bakerbookhouse.com. That's bakerbookhouse.com and Leading Well by Dr. Jean Porter King. Dr. Dr. Jean, thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Dr. Bart, thank you for the partnership and thank you for having me. Have a blessed day. God bless.